Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my talk about Genie and WebAssembly today. Um, my name is Lee. I'm a software engineer at Snapchat. Um, so uh, this talk is about we uh, move a large amount of C++ code originally written for Android and iOS to a web app. So just a few months ago, um, actually two months ago, Snapchat uh, for desktop web was released to public. It brings the familiar Snapchat experience to a, into a web browser app. So a less known fact was that um, a lot of this internal code in that web app was actually written in C++, and it's exactly the same C++ as used in the mobile apps. Um, the tool we use to bridge our C++ code to the TypeScript web app is the same one we use for uh, binding iOS and Android code to, to C++, it's called Genie. So what is Genie? Um, Genie is a project originally created by Dropbox. Um, it generates bridging code between C++ and other programming languages. Um, it has three parts. It has an interface definition language, it has a code generator, and it has a smart support library. As you can see in the diagram, um, um, you have this, you prepare this Genie IDL file and you feed it to the code generation tool and it generates a bunch of files. And then you compile this generic file and your own handwritten implementation file and your, all your spe platform specific code and you compile everything together and link with support library and you generate this mobile app. Um, so this is how it was used for the mobile app. The original version of the Genie only supports interfacing C++ with Objective-C for iOS and Java on Android. So this, here's a brief history of we, how we use Genie at Snap. Snapstat has started, being, uh, has started using Genie since 2016. Um, in 2018, Dropbox stopped developing Genie. Um, in fact, they, start, they stopped using C++ altogether. So we developed our own version since then, and uh, we're based on the original. We have added a lot of stability and performance improvements over the years, as well as many new features. Um, we open sourced our version in 2021, so last year, on GitHub. Um, the WebAssembly support we developed for our Snapchat web app is the latest new feature. Um, for someone, for if you someone not, not familiar with WebAssembly, uh, WebAssembly is a kind of code that can be running modern web browsers, as, just like JavaScript, and um, it's, um, it, it has some advantage in performance. It's a compile language, so it runs a bit faster than JavaScript. But the focus of this work um, is not exactly um, about performance, it's more about reusing our existing C++ code base. Um, why did we uh, build our own WebAssembly binding tool? Um, there are a few existing tools around, um, but we have a fairly large code base that is already already bridged to our mobile apps through the tool Genie. Um, having Genie support WebAssembly means we, we get to use these uh, existing interfaces and existing implementation code with very minimal change. Um, the dev teams are already very familiar with using Genie on other platforms, so giving them the exactly same tool means they have very little, very little learning to is required. Um, and at, at the time when we started developing this, um, the alternatives that I evaluate or have some limitations that made them not viable for our use case. So compared to the alternatives, um, the other two C++ binding tools available um, for EM scripting, which is the C++ WebAssembly toolchain, um, and their website they recommended WebIDR Binder and EM Bind. WebIDR Binder is a, is a bit simpler tool than EM Binder and Genie. Um, it uses another kind of interface definition language called WebRDL and to define the binding between C++ and JavaScript. Um, EM binding instead uses pure C++ code to define the interfaces. Um, it is very feature rich and it supports almost um, lots of C++ constructs. Um, Genie's WebAssembly feature in the very low level uses uh, EM bind internally as an implementation detail. Uh, we currently use EM bind to forward method calls and performing some of the primitive types marshalling. Um, so uh, the biggest reason to use Genie over other 
binding tool is that it supports um, web apps, Android, iOS, all at the same time. This actually allows Snapchat to take our existing mobile C++ code written for Android and iOS, and we bring it to our web, broad, web apps with uh, very little changes, almost exactly the same code. And another big reason is we generate TypeScript interface output. Um, the other tools, all, they are only JavaScript, but we, we will generate uh, very type-rich um, um, very type-rich type of definitions for TypeScript. Um, it gives us static error checking in IDE and very nice syntax, uh, syntax um, completion uh, in IDE such as Visual Studio Code. Uh, we generate interfaces, differentiates nullable and non null types, so that um, means you're, you're less likely to make mistakes on this. So we have better support for um, C++ containers. Um, Genie translates C++ vectors, sets, and maps to JavaScript's built-in arrays, sets, and maps. Um, so in the example, you can see that we call a, a, a Genie interface and get strings. We get a list of strings that is um, very natural. Uh, with EM bind, uh, they get translated into a, an object that wraps a, a C++ vector. So it, it's less easy to use. As you can see, you, get, you call this function, get a list of strings, you get a, a, a wrapper of C++ STD vector uh, instead of a JavaScript array. So you will have to call some methods to retrieve elements one by one. Um, Web IDO binary, on the other hand, does not translate containers automatically. Um, Another advantage of the, the GD interface is that it, it, it's very natural to uh, allow you to, to implement these interfaces in, in TypeScript. Um, in the example, you can see um, it, it really just like implementing another native type TypeScript interface. You define an interface that just implements that other, uh, the Genie defined interface. And in EMBind, if you want to implement a, an interface in JavaScript, you will have to define an object and uh, you call a function to implement that. And that feels a bit awkward. It's not as natural as doing just doing it in the type level. Um, we also support asynchronous methods, which is um, pretty cool. Um, because you can, you can write, um, you can return a, a future type um, in, in, G, in, in the Gini interface. Uh, return here, the, in the example, you have a uh, in 32-bit integer value, and it's, it's a future. That means when you call that method, it does not immediately give you a, a, an integer, but it gives you a future. And then you can uh, await on that, on that future in your TypeScript code. Um, in your C++ code, this part is um, maps to a, a future type and a promise type, which is very similar to one of the earlier um, uh, C++ concurrency TS. And it's, very closely mimic that interface. Um, so you can just set value and um, um, satisfy that, uh, that, that future. Um, so next we're going to talk about um, building web apps with Genie. So the, the Genie workflow is like this. First you create uh, some IDO files. Um, you define your interfaces and their methods in these IDO files. Uh, you can also define user data types, uh, mainly it's uh, records and enums. Uh, records are data and enums are just um, symbols for, for, for numbers. Um, then you call the uh, code generator on the command line. Um, Genie has a lot of command line options to customize your output. So we typically would create a shell script called rungenie.sh and put all these um, command line arguments into that, that script file. Um, once the code generated complete, it will generate a bunch of interfaces in your preferred language, and then you can just take these interfaces and implement them uh, in your implementation language. Um, this mostly C++. Um, once everything is, all the code is written, you just compile everything, compile everything, and link them together and create your final app. So the. In this example, you can see um, on the left we have uh, an interface, an example of an interface. That's, that interface is going to be implementing C++, hence there is a plus C um, after the interface keyword. And the name is interface is my interface and has two methods. Um, one uh, instance method that you can call on the object and one static method, which is a factory method. You just call it to create, that create an implementation of that interface. 
Um, on the right, you have two, um, we have two, um, one record and one enum. Uh, the record is just, um, you have name and you define a few fields to specify the types. And uh, enum is very straightforward, very close to what C++ enums look like. Um, we have a bunch of primitive types. These are the built-in types that's um, uh, supported by Genie IDEO. Um, you can see this, have, we have bools and a different kind, bit different widths of integers and floating points. Uh, we have integer 64 bit integer, which is a bit sp sp special in, in JavaScript because it has to be mapped to big int, not just a number. Um, there is a string uh, we mapped to uh, the standard uh, uh, STD string in C and the JavaScript string. Uh, we have binary to pass um, non string integer array, um, a unsigned 8 bit integer array. Uh, we have data uh, date types. Um, there are also some uh, composite types that uh, mainly they are containers. Um, for example, we have a list that uh, uh, maps to C plus vector. We have set that maps to um, a set, uh, an order set, and the map that is just a, an order map. We have optional that determines whether an, a field, um, a field or a, a parameter is uh, nullable or not. They map to C++ type optional, STD optional. So let's just try it out. We'll just do a live demo of turning a simple, um, we'll turn a simple, um, here we can see the examples. Um, we already have this Genie, Genie interface defined here that we have a record defines some data which can contains only items list, uh, which are a string list, and we have uh, an enum defines how we're gonna sort these items. Uh, we have a simple interface that basically only has one method that takes, um, it just sorts things. Um, then we have some static factory methods. We have a listener object that's going to be implementing our platform specific language. Um, it has, uh, once the, the sort is done, um, we, our C++ implementation will call this callback interface and notify the UI to update. So here we go, we will just go to the, pop to the command line and uh, run the code generator. Here we go, um, code generator is done and uh, we can see here we have a generator, a generator source uh, directory and it has a bunch of directory for C++ code, which contains all the C++ interfaces generated um, from this um, IDL. And we also have, um, of course, TypeScript file that's generated. Contains all these interface definitions for our TypeScript. And once, I actually here I have an Xcode project. I can show you how this compiles after we just, we, can, we already generated code for Objective-C so we can just run it and uh, get a mobile app running. So this is how it works. Uh, we can type a few lines here like line one, line two, and we click these buttons. We can sort them with C++. So these are actually calling C++ to um, sort these lines. Now we're going to turn this into a web app. So we're not going to write any new uh, C++ code. We'll just use the existing implementation code that's already written. Here in this handwritten SRC, that's um, C++ code that implements a sort. We Here we have this C++ class just implements the sort items. That's the Gini interface. And in the other implementation file, it's just the implementation of that interface. Um, now we're just, um, we have I've already written a compile.s for simplicity. I'm not going to use any build tools. I will just use the, the EMCC compiler directly. Um, it will take, it will output um, textsort.ws wasm.js, this is the output file name. We use this, uh, C++17. Uh, we enable exceptions and we enable EM bind and there are a few flags that we need to make large integers, stuff like that working. And define some int, um, include, include directories. 
And then we include all these generated WASM binding files. We include all these handwritten C++ implementation files, and we include all the um, GD support library CPP files. Now we can just um, use this shell script to compile the code. So you can see we, I didn't write any C++ code. I just use the existing ones. Once after compile, we have two um, new files, text.wasm.js and text.wasm.wasm. Now we just um, take these two files and uh, move them into um, and we're going to to the TypeScript directory here. Here we go. We have this here. And uh, now we can write some TypeScript code to use these um, WASM files. So this is the TypeScript file. We import the, the type definitions, and we um, load this um, web, web, web assembly module um, in here, and uh, this is a delayed load. Now we just implement the callback interface here, and we define a function sort, um, which takes a sort order. We have we grab a few um, button elements in the HTML document and bind them to uh, call this sort method. Uh, this is just our type, TypeScript file, and we're going to compile this. Uh, TypeScript file with TSC. It's compiled and we got a JS file. Um, another step we need to do is to um, bundle it with all its dependencies so it can be used in HTML file. So we got a bundle.js. Now we just open this HTML file. You can see this is a very simple HTML file. In in this script line, we load the, the WebAssembly file. And here we create uh, just a text area and uh, three buttons. And the last line, we just load our compiled um, JavaScript file, which is compiled from TypeScript. And that's all. That's already done. Um, I can now run a simple Python HTTP server and uh, just And a web browser. Let's talk to web browser. We'll just switch to localhost 8000. And I can see this, this demo HTML. Right, it's already here. We can sort it by ascend, uh, sort it by, diff, by this diff, different orders and sort it random. This is already calling C in a web app and works exactly the same as the mobile app. So here I'm going to show you a bit uh, how it was uh, implemented under the hood. The design philosophy of Genie Wasm is um, we prioritize developer productivity over other factors. Um, so the portable C++ implementation, we should work across our platforms as much as possible without changing. Um, our JavaScript and TypeScript user code should resemble their Java, Java and Object C code on Android and iOS so that people can have a very easy time switching to a new language. Um, we use JavaScript native types as much as possible. Um, we don't want to wrap C++ types. We just use native types. Um, we want to reach feature parity with Android and iOS so that everything can be ported over easily without missing features. Um, by crossing the WebAssembly JavaScript boundary, um, the web as WebAssembly functions can actually be called directly from JavaScript. If you write a C function, you declare ex extrinsy, you can directly call them from JavaScript. However, the only that type that can be directly exchanged is just simple numbers. Um, you can pass numbers, but not other objects. Um, but in order to pass other objects, we'll take advantage of that the address space. The entire address space of the C++ model is an array buffer in JavaScript. It is accessible from both JavaScript and uh, from C++, of course, because it's C++ address space. Um, in order to pass other types, C++ data as a number, and then we access the C++ memory space directly from JS, or we can create a numerical token to the data, and we pass the token 
Uh, that would take a look up. Uh, it's a bit slower, but um, that's, as I said, that's, that performance is not IFM our first priority. Um, the, it works well enough. We currently use EMBind to pass basic data types. So numbers can be passed directly. Strings, uh, EMBind will handle C++ memory access for us. Basically, it will pass a pointer and copy that string into a JavaScript string. Um, opaque objects um, is also passed by EMBind. Um, it's mapped to uh, C++. Uh, in, uh, it, when it maps to C++, it, it becomes a val type. Um, EMBind EM assigns a token to that object, so in the, it will perform a lookup on the JavaScript, in the JavaScript world and find the right object. Um, C++ objects in JavaScript was done, uh, implemented in, um, roughly like this diagram shows. Um, the JavaScript will hold a C++ proxy object that's generated from Gini, um, and that C++ pro proxy object will proxy object will call the C++ object for us. On the C++ side, um, the implementation object is held by a is held by a shared pointer. Um, so releasing, um, if you can have multiple references in C++ and releasing uh, all the references in C++ still will not um, cause the object to be destroyed because it still has a uh, an owner as a, as C++ CPP proxy in the JavaScript land. Um, an important aspect um, is automatic memory management. Uh, at the time was this, of this implementation, um, none of EMBind and, and, and uh, uh, web, web IDL binary supports automatic management, man, memory management. So if you have C++ object in JavaScript, you have to manually call delete method to delete them. Um, which is kind of not acceptable, not 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 acceptable for our use case. Um, so when so so the way we solve this is we took took advantage of a modern um, feature in uh, recent versions of web browsers. It has a finalization registry. So we are, when, whenever we create a C plus object, we will re register its proxy with the finalization registry. So when the JS object uh, JS owned proxy aspire. The uh, shared object, um, shared PTR will be um, automatically released. When it's gone, um, the finalization registry will call some core function to release the shared pointer on the C++ side. So that, that means we don't have to worry about um, managing memory on the JavaScript side. Um, another important aspect is uh, we need to retain object identity. That means um, if we pass the same C++ object um, multiple times into JavaScript land, and they should pass the equivalent um, equivalent uh, check. The, they should compare exactly the same as the same object. Um, this is done by adding, uh, introducing a C++ proxy cache in the C++ side. Um, when we create a new C++ proxy, it's added to the cache uh, as a weak weak reference. Um, so when we need to pass another proxy uh, across the border, um, we will check first in the proxy cache and see if it's already there. If it's already there, then we will pass back the same um, proxy object so that it will compare the same in the JavaScript. Um, JavaScript objects in C++. Um, we, again, we have a proxy cache to manage the object identity problem. Um, Otherwise, it is um, we have have this um, Java JavaScript proxy that works as a as a medium to um, when the C++ code C++ user code can hold this this JavaScript proxy uh, via shared pointer and can call the call the method into JavaScript object. Um, marshalling data across the language boundary was, as I said earlier, the Primitive, primitive types are already handled by EMBind under the hood. Um, we have this, um, every, for every complicated type, we have complex type, we, have, um, we generate a, a helper class um, which manages the, the marshalling from, from C++ and to, to C++. You have both methods that's automatically generated. Um, it's generated in a recursive way, so if you have um, um, nested types, um, like one complex type containing another type, um, it will call, uh, it will be um, marshaled in a recursive way. 
there is a special thing is the box type that is used to manage the um, um, boxing of, of some types um, because we can't have um, um, in integers, we can't have them um, as directly as value objects in containers. They have to be boxed as, as objects. So here we go, we can have this um, redirect this, um, this type to another type uh, so that they can be stored in, the, in, in, in containers. Um, we also support exception handling, which is actually pretty difficult. Um, we support throwing C++ exceptions into JS, and we also support throwing C++ exceptions um, through JS and into another C++ block, and we can catch it there and retain all the uh, exception, original exception state. Um, we also support uh, throwing Java exceptions into C++ or through C++ into another level of JavaScript. Uh, and in each case, we make sure the um, error informations are retained. Um, so let's talk about some limitations. Um, JavaScript does not support overriding um, the default comparison and hashing operation on, on user-defined types. Um, because of this, um, GD cannot automatically generate these methods for user-defined types. It is, it is possible to generate these for Android and iOS, but not, not for uh, web apps. And because of this above reason, um, user-defined types cannot be used as map keys because as, uh, the maps are unordered maps in C++ and they, it needs a, a hash, hash function. Um, there is no multi-threading support. Um, WebAssembly itself can support threads with web workers, but we currently, um, the Genie WebSum support is based on EMBind, and the EMBind does not work very well across threads. And in that last limitation is we require a fairly recent version, like last two years version of a browser to run. Um, I suppose for most use cases, this at least for Snapchat's use case, this is not a problem. We just require users have a recent uh, version of browsers to run our app. Um, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Um, the TRDR here, Genie can bind your C++ code to browser apps as well as your mobile apps. Um, we have TypeScript output and that makes them consuming them really easy. Um, it is free and open source on GitHub, and it's been actively developed and maintained by Snap. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, I think I have some time to answer questions. Yes?